it's so interesting it's yeah. so interesting it's such a i've never actually heard of that concept before a lot of bombs a lot of things falling apart a lot of things <laughs> being rebuilt but it's really cool walking around this area and there's just so much going on there's so much to see we're honestly stacy and i like walking around like today's gonna be another cool day exploring manila we've shown you guys a lot of like what the CBD sort of area looks like and like the cool hipster sort of vibes which is very much us but there's a lot of history here that we don't know about and we want to see more and share more about. Yeah so today we're partnering with Old Manila Walks which is like a walking tour in um, like in the old walled area of Manila which we didn't even really know much about. We didn't know anything about it. It's called Intramuros. <laughs> okay, we, we still don't know by the way you're gonna find out with us. It's called Intramuros and it's like a, yeah, a walled quarter that's got like cobblestone streets mm. Heaps of history. I think we might be seeing a Chinese cemetery and everything as well. Uh, but basically, what we're trying to say is come along and learn with us because we know nothing as of right now. So we've just arrived inside the walls of Intramuros. It's such a cool looking place. It feels, it feels Spanish. It feels like European. And I think that's more of the history we're going to learn today about how the Spanish had such an influence and like had a stronghold over the Philippines for a while but I don't want to jump ahead and make stuff up <laughs> but it feels really cool you can tell we're in a different area so we're gonna try and find our guide we're working walking towards um, uh, Romus Plaza Romus um, to go and tr I think maybe our guide will be Ivan who's the owner of Old Manila Walks um, owner operator as well so we're gonna go and get this tour started and see what the day's all about. Lamborghini. <laughs> I don't think that's a Lamborghini. <laughs> Nice to meet you. <laughs> How are you? Very well. And we are uh, a tour outfit which does all these um, historical cultural tours around the old city. So we're just gonna try to cram 450 years <laughs> worth of history <laughs> in about 90 minutes. Perfect. Okay. So we've just come inside the Manila Cathedral. It's such a beautiful and grand place. You can see how enormous it is back here. There's actually a wedding about to take place in about 30 minutes, but Ivan was just telling us that this is the eighth rendition of this cathedral because it has been bombed and destroyed so many times. So they've had to rebuild it that many times to get it to where it looks now. I'm assuming they rebuild it back better every time, but it's one of those places where you walk in, like any church or any sort of cathedral like that, where you just, it's hard to explain, but hopefully you know what I mean, where you just, you get that feeling, there's, there's something, it's just, it's, it's beautiful and it's just, there's this echo and it's, I don't know, it's, it's difficult, but it's a really, really grand and amazing spot. So the Spanish actually colonized the Philippines for about 300 years, apparently. Um, and we were just learning more about Manila actually wasn't the capital of the Philippines to begin with, which is the sort of thing I've just never have known. Apparently it used to be Cebu, but then they realized that that wasn't really a strategic location just in terms of a map. Um, Manila has a river and access to the seaways for ships and everything to come in as well. So already we're learning so much. Every time we do one of these days with a guide, we're it really just opens our eyes to the world that we get to visit and travel so hopefully this remains interesting for you guys to see and learn more about what the city and what the Philippines has sort of all been about because for us it's our second time visiting here we just yeah we probably should have touched on this the first time to be perfectly honest. Everything that was inside the walls was called Intramuros and that is largely where the uh, Spanish colonials had their ruling institutions and everything outside the walls was referred to as Extra Muros or the outer city. So while a golf course isn't exactly glamorous out here now, outside the wall here um, this was all a bay or this was actually all a beach and the water that's left behind was sort of from a moat that used to run through like as any sort of protective wall would back in those days and it's now been turned <laughs> turned into a golf course but it's the oldest standing golf course in the country over a hundred years. Quite interesting to know how a lot of the names are very literal 
in the, in the older days there where intramuros literally was meaning, as Ivan was just explaining then, inside the wall. Uh, and apparently it was created to protect from like invasion, I suppose, which was predominantly from the British and from the Dutch and to a certain extent the Chinese, but apparently the Chinese also lived here in, in one way or another and so sort of shared the land. Well, that, that part over there is where you have cannons and it's, the reason why it's separate is because uh, if when you have cannons you have gunpowder yeah, of course. And, and when you have gunpowder, if that explodes and that is attached to the wall, then you will. <laughs> the, the wall goes with it. The wall, yeah. yeah. So I've just come over closer to where the cannons are, and it's, it's just crazy that it's still here. It looks like there's a little uh, bridge or a road that you kind of come through mm. from the inside of the wall out into there. I can't believe that it's still standing. Yeah. It's insane. So this whole, well, it's hard to explain what it looks like now, but this whole formation here actually used to be an enormous tower that's been bombed so many times that it's just sort of fallen over. And But they've left it here to sort of preserve the history and the story behind, I suppose. But I seem to be hearing that story a lot. A lot of bombs, a lot of things falling apart, a lot of things being rebuilt. You stay and I like walking around, like just <laughs> trying to check everything out. It's good to have Ivan though, just sort of talking us through and slowing us down and like explaining some of the history behind it trying to share that with you guys but it's very difficult to take all of this incredible knowledge and put it into like snippets you got to come and do the tour yourself i suppose so i'm walking into this little uh heighted area here with a little rooftop above me it's gonna get very echoey this is where they used to shoot guns from at the oldest monastery in our city, which is called San Agustin. Um, it was built in 1571. Uh, well, today it's partly, it's still a monastery, uh, and it's still, a, well, part of it has been turned into a museum. Okay, so which basically tells you a, a, a period of our city's history. So Ivan's just filled us in on um, basically how Manila, Manila became so prosperous. And basically it was uh, from the Spanish coming here and getting things like um, spices and silks, all this stuff behind yeah. me. Ginger, nutmeg, pepper, things that they couldn't get. Yeah, they called, they called them exotic things <laughs> from Southeast Asia. Um, and then they would go on these huge ships, which took about a year to sail back through Mexico and then back to Spain, where they would sell them. Make all their money. And make their money. <laughs> so just finding out that these here, these windows, are actually shells, like beach shells. It's absolutely crazy. So this is how they would have originally been done and they've either been replaced or they've just sort of kept some of them from, from the first place. Now we're in a little spot. I'm not sure 100% sure of the name, but it's sort of like it's like an example house talking about what would have been here uh, from like the shipping villages, where you can see like concrete on the bottom, and then they have oh, how far do I have to go? <laughs> Wood up there, which is to earthquake proof them. This is like one of the typical sort of rich courtyards, so to speak, for the movers and shakers, the guys making all the money from shipping. It's pretty grand. It's pretty grand to us. Waterfall in the middle there, a water fountain. Sorry.
We've had an awesome afternoon touring around Intramuros. So interesting. So interesting. Normally the tour would end right there where I finished the last bit of footage, but Ivan's um, taken us now to give us a sneak peek into a second tour, which is a Chinese cemetery. It looks so interesting. We've only just driven in the front and it's... It's crazy. So I said to him in, in the car, what makes this so unique? Like, what, why, why is a cemetery so unique? And he just sort of said, just, just wait. Just wait. And <laughs> <laughs> just driving in alone, we can completely see. So we're going to have a quick look at around here and uh, find out a little bit more about what this is all about. These cool. most, uh, oldest and historic cemeteries. Now, among the three, the most famous one is the Chinese cemetery. Uh, so this place was established in 1879, no? uh, as a place for the Chinese community. No? Uh, so the interesting thing here is that if you look at the architecture of the place, it's not something that you would usually associate with a cemetery uh, because we have a lot of mausoleums here. the thing that makes this cemetery so unique is it's not the typical I mean it might be different where you're from but for us the cemetery is normally like a grass area you've got a tombstone very small quite quaint everybody's sort of got very sort of similar feel this is 50, 54 hectares 54 hectares large and they don't just have tombstones they have like entire what would be the right word for it Ivan? Mausoleums, not just a tombstone. Hey, look how big this street is alone. So this right here is one plot, like for one or a couple generally, from that side there all the way down to this joining point here. And then the um, coffins and everything are in there. They're absolutely enormous. Like we've just walked in and just all the way down is these one-off mausoleums. just learned is that it's not so much about the dead these places are more for the living where they come and they spend time here apparently a lot of them actually have kitchens and like restrooms as well like they have bathrooms so that family can actually yeah like properly spend some time it's just, so interesting it's eh? so interesting it's such a I've never actually heard of that concept before and it definitely doesn't exist in New Zealand at least that we know of but well I think it's just on a smaller scale much yeah, smaller it's just also fascinating we had such a cool day today it was yeah. awesome seeing like another side of Manila that we had no idea about and learning about the history yeah because we've just flown through here well the last time we were yeah, here just passing right um so yeah it was so cool and doing a tour as well is always handy actually um when we do a lot of planning ourselves for just day-to-day -day stuff to be able to step back and have somebody take you around is like it really eases the load and makes life so <laughs> much so simpler good. for sure <laughs> So as, um, as normal, if you're interested in doing a tour or finding out more about what uh, Old Manila Walks offer, uh, link in the description below. We can personally really highly recommend their, their service and Ivan in particular was really awesome as well. So um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the comments. Bye. Bye.